This episode of G News is brought to you by the Toyota Corolla. Let's lead the way. Running. Swimming. No, running. Swimming. Running. Runoff. I have a video to do. What's up guys, Trace here. Thank you for watching D News today. In high school, I was on the track and the cross country teams, but I was also on the swim team. Running is exercise, swimming is also exercise, and they are both great in their own way, but which one is better? It's time for a science throwdown. Let's tackle the benefits. Running is easy. Most people have two legs. They can probably walk and run, if imperfectly. It's great cardiovascular exercise. Running USA, the major running and foot racing advocacy organization, says 30 million people took to the streets at least 50 times per person in 2012. People who run or jog regularly, even for a five to 10 minute stint every day, are healthier than non-runners, and they have a 45% lower cardiovascular mortality. Running can build bone density, and runners have later onset age-related disabilities and three years added to their lives in comparison to non-runners. Swimming has a little higher learning curve. You might have to take swimming lessons, for one, but once you've gotten past that hurdle, the benefits are clear. Swimming is also great cardiovascular exercise. A 2008 peer-reviewed study in the International Journal of Aquatic Research and Education followed over 40,000 men for 13 years and found lower mortality rates than people who were sedentary who were walkers, and also who were runners. Resistance training is better than pure cardio for building bone density and muscle, and swimming does have resistance if it's light. In fact, the butterfly, it's a swim stroke, is considered the single most taxing movement in sports. It's more difficult than bicycling 14 miles an hour or running a 10 minute mile. Calories burned for either running or swimming vary depending on your weight and the difficulty level you're tackling. Although overall, the Journal of the American Statistical Association found that swimmers will burn 25% more calories, but runners can usually go for longer distances. Running's biggest drawback is impact problems, right? It's an impact sport, my dad always said so, but it might not be considered that. A 21-year-long Stanford study of 1,000 runners and non-runners found joint problems were equally spread across both groups. Minimalist or barefoot running and thick running shoes also is a battle within running culture, but in a comprehensive study of shoes versus no shoes, the problem was people and how they were running, not the shoes themselves. If we were used to running with shoes and tried barefoot, we would hurt ourselves, and also the opposite were true. So fight about it if you want, guys, but if you do it right, science seems to say they're both fine. Long distance intensive running can cause health problems. We've talked about that before on D News, so you can check that out. Swimming has an obvious drawback though, of course, drowning. It does happen, though it's pretty damn rare. Chlorine in swimming pools isn't great for your skin, but it's there to kill disease-causing contaminants. Kids' overexposure to chlorine can reduce testosterone, and infant overexposure can cause respiratory problems. So this is after hundreds of hours in a pool environment, so maybe not something everyone would have to be concerned about. It can also be alleviated by swimming in a lake, ocean, or saltwater pool. So for me, it seems like swimming versus running is kind of a tie. Overall, both swimming and running promote cardiovascular health as long as you don't overdo it and you get the proper training. With both swimming and running, make sure you talk to someone about proper technique if you want to do it right. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you're doing it properly. But which do you think is better? Why don't you tell us? Because I like both. That's what the comments are for. You can also subscribe for more D News and check this video out because exercise is hard, but so is going off grid. It's not for everybody. Seeker's new show, Going Off Grid, explores the lives of those who chose a different path. This pro snowboarder lives in a tiny house in Northern California, and the whole thing, guys, it's 225 square feet. That's little. Wow. wow. This is the inside. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> How long did it take for you to build this place? It took me five years. Thank you for watching D News, and we'll see you next time. This episode of D News is brought to you by the Toyota Corolla. Let's lead the way.